Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Uh, today we're kind of going into a camera review and you've seen the thumbnail, you probably read the title and that is about the Hasselblad super wide camera. When one thinks about Hasselblad cameras, they think of the Hasselblad 500CM kind of style body, like the one I have here, this is a 500C. And this is what basically made Hasselblad what Hasselblad became. So it just basically was the core product, was the V series of cameras, the V system, you know, interchangeable lenses, interchangeable finders, interchangeable advanced wheels with meters built in sometimes, interchangeable backs, some motor grips and all kinds of things. And this camera system has a ton of things for it. Like the lenses are called Zeiss, they're really nice. It has a sync speed all at all speeds because of the leaf shutter, lots of things going on there. But there's one little problem with this camera system, and it is that it is not mirrorless. It has a built-in mirror inside because it's a SLR. So that means that all lenses built for the system have to be uh, basically retro focused. They have to be projecting the image that whole box backwards. And when designing uh, lenses, when you do retro focus um, lenses, they have to have some compromise. They can't be as good as when they have no uh, mirror, basically like a Leica lens that has no mirror inside. And for that reason, the wide angle lenses in the Hasselblad, the 40, the 50, the 60, and the 30 wide, uh, fisheye have like, they're really good lenses, but they're not as good as they could be due to that constraint. For that, Hasselblad thought about it and said, what do we do? How do we make a perfect lens that fits the system. So they basically ditched this whole camera and they made a lens that is fixed to a camera. And this is the Hasselblad SWC. This camera has a 38 millimeter Biogon made by Carl Zeiss. This is a very, very famous design. Uh, I guess, you know, it's just famous. I know it, there's a 75 Biogon, there's other Biogons for 35 mil cameras. But the thing is, this camera is part of the system by the back, basically, which you can remove, but it has no mirror. The lens is stuck to the body. The body is less than a couple centimeters or an inch wide, and it has a viewfinder, which is interchangeable. But this camera has the fact that it can be much better at a wide angle lens than the ones on the V system in the, you know, the boxy SLR lenses. And this camera came out and Hasselblad basically advertised it as for the price of a lens, you have a body. So the body was kind of included and it was never a cheap camera uh, or cheap lens camera combo, but it was amazingly good. And that is what has made the Hasselblad SWC become basically a legend in itself as one of the best wide angle lenses in medium format. A lot of people say the Mamiya 7 43mm is one of the best too, or even better. I have never shot that one, even though I've had Mamiya 7s many times, but I truly love this 38mm uh, on the 6x6. So, I've owned this camera for many, many, many years. I got, uh, I went crazy for it when I heard about it the first time, and I bought myself one, shot it a ton, I've always used this camera as a point and shoot, um, you know, lens style. I even removed the finder and would just have a light meter on the top and just run around chasing things and people and shooting like that. And I really like that. Once you've shot like, I'd say five, six rolls, you kind of already have in your head what the frame lines are gonna look like and what you're gonna get in the shot. And this is a 38 on six by six, which Conversion is not one to one because you know it's one times one against three, uh, two to three on 35, but it's around between a 17, 20 ish lens on 35. So it's not super wide for a lot of people, but it is wide when you shoot it. And it's just beautiful. It's a, it's a camera system that is amazing. I sold mine because. What happened is I used to, I, I'm very into architect, uh, architectural photography, even though I don't take any actual architectural uh, photos, I really like it. And that's what I would love or dream of shooting all day, every day. Um, and I took this camera out and I was like, okay, I love how wide angle it is. I love how good it is with distortion and sharpness. Let me take it out and get pictures with this camera on a tripod. So 
This camera has a way that you can take off the back and you can attach like a ground glass and a prism and you can use the waist level finder normal prism or the RFMX prism, something like that. And you can use it like a mini large format camera, like a mini view camera. So you have your six by six focusing screen and you basically compose. The problem is by the time I was doing that, I found why am I not just shooting four by five? This is just such a cumbersome way to like shoot. So I decided, nah, this camera's not for me and sold it and immediately regretted it. This camera was not for me to use like that. It's to use how I had used previously and I picked it up again. This one I picked up at work here at Camera Store. It's being refurbished by our mechanic, Tony, who does amazing work in Hasselblad. And I've been shooting this for a year and a half now. And I absolutely love it. I will not sell this again. I have learned my lesson. But there's a thing when you buy a specialty camera. And what I like to consider specialty cameras are cameras that can't do multiple things. So if you buy the Hasselblad 500CM, you can shoot like normal portraits with the 80. You can shoot like more portrait portraits with like 150 mil, 180 mil, or you can shoot some wide angles with it. It can do multiple things. But when you go out with the super wide, you can only do super wide. There's nothing else you can do. And that happened to me also with the Hasselblad X-Band. When you go out with the X-Band, you can only do X-Band. And yes, I know the X-Band goes back to full frame, but nobody does that. So I actually sold the X-Band for the same very reason. I found that every time I went out with it, it either was thinking on X-Band mode or I could not shoot it. So when I go with a super wide, I have to think I'm only shooting super wide style. And if I do that, I have a, such a fun time shooting this camera and I get good results. And obviously everybody gets bad results too. I do too, but like it just renders amazingly well. It's a really fun camera to shoot family events and children running around because it's just so wide. You barely have to focus and do bear in mind, this camera doesn't have a way to, for you to focus and know where you're focusing. It's kind of like a mirrorless with no live view. So you have to guesstimate and you have a good uh, depth of field scale on the lens, but you have to kind of guess where you're going and shooting like that. So it's a hyperfocal kind of camera. Like I said, you, yes, you can use a uh, back on the back, like a focusing screen on the back, but it's just super annoying to use. So yeah, this camera I adore. I highly recommend it if anybody likes this kind of stuff, but bear in mind what I said, it is a very specialty camera that's gonna take amazing pictures, but you can't do anything else but that. Shoot super wide pictures. SWC stands for super wide camera. And Hasselblad made this, I think almost as a proof of concept, could they do this? If you look at the first super wide, it was basically like a large format lens with a 38 on it and like a, like a shutter that's not even encased in this like housing. It looks like a Frankenstein they did just to demonstrate they could do it. And then they came out with this uh, super wide and then the super wide CM. So it has had multiple iterations. Then there's the 903 and 905, which have the CF style uh, lens. They changed the prism, I mean the viewfinder. So it's had multiple iterations. It is not a cheap camera by any means, but it is a amazing camera to use. I like it, I love it, I recommend it, but like I said, it is not for everybody. I have been putting images throughout the video. I have shot color in black and white. Nowadays I shoot mostly black and white with medium format, but it's just, it just, I don't know, there's this thing to it that I have never found with the 50 and the Hasselblad V or with the 60 that I really liked about the Hasselblad SWC. It does have a bubble level on the top, which you can see from the finder. So basically when you look at the finder, you can kind of like move your eye and see. On the newer uh, finder, the bubble's inside, which is great. And that way you can see. But the finder is, like I said, it's more like an orientation of what you're going to get in the shot. And they even have a manual uh, in the manual. It says like if you're close up, how to use it because it does, you know, there's no parallax obviously on the finder. But yeah. Hasselblad SWC is an amazing camera. They've actually reiterated now in digital. There's the 907X, I think is the name, which shoots like a digital back, which you can actually use on this camera and other Hasselblads, which is pretty cool. But it has like a 45 mil, I think, or a 38, but it isn't a six by six sensor. So it kind of is not so wide. But yeah, if I had to say something about this camera is it's stellar. 
I recommend it, but only if you know that you can go out and shoot with it. There are a couple of photographers that I've uh, found through the years that shoot with this camera and do amazing uh, work, like Lee Friedlander. I highly recommend, there's I think a book called Cars or something like it, where he shoots from inside the car, including elements of the car and landscape of American landscape, which is really cool. And there's a couple other photographers online. There's one actually on Instagram that I really enjoy. And I'll leave a link to his Instagram below because it's, I think it's Gary, I'm forgetting your name right now, but I think it is Gary. And he does amazing work. But I think he does the same as I do. When he goes out with this camera, he shoots this camera and sees in this format for the time shooting. And that is the best way to get the best results from it. I've printed this and the lens is stellar. So there's nothing wrong with it. It is a 4.5 lens. So if you're kind of like into shooting in the dark, you are gonna have a bit of a hard time handheld, but you know, tripod uh, sockets on the bottom, just put it on a tripod and enjoy. Um, it is a little quirky to use, I will say. The body is so thin that it's hard to sometimes know where to put your hands. The shutter is on the top, which is a little weird at some times. The advance is the worst thing ever because it's so thin that they couldn't really put a full advance thing. And when you advance, you hit the strap, which is really annoying. Um, but yeah, the camera works great. It uses the normal Hasselblad backs, which are A12, A24, you know, A16, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I... I love this camera. I honestly can't recommend it enough. It's a camera, like I said, I don't do reviews usually, but it's a camera I've owned so long. I have enough results. I can tell you from experience that it's amazing. And it just, I don't think it can get better in wide angle, medium format. But again, maybe you wanna see what you're shooting. So then this camera is not for you. Uh, but if you do uh, learn how to use it and enjoy with its quirks, you'll be very satisfied. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little Hasselblad SWC review, I guess. Um, I'll leave the links below to like, if you wanna buy it or you wanna support the channel through Patreon and those Instagram um, the photographer that uses this camera. But yeah, see you in the next one. Bye.